Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to go through how to choose an Azure Compute Service. The term compute refers to hosting model for computing resources that your applications run on. This flowchart will help you to choose a compute solution for your application. When you decide to start moving your resources to the cloud, you can decide is it going to be a brand new environment or is it going to be a migration scenario? Let's look at a migration scenario. On a migrating scenario, you would first decide is this going to be a lift and shift or is it going to be a compute cloud optimized environment? If it is a lift and shift scenario, you will think about can I containerize this environment? If yes, you will think about does it require any sort of orchestration? Based on that, you will choose the container environment. If you need an orchestration, you will go with AKS. If you don't need orchestration, you will go with Azure App Service. If you don't want containerized environment, you have plenty of other options as well to go with Azure App Service or virtual machines. What if it is a brand new environment? Then you have so many other decisions to take. If you want full control, you can of course choose virtual machine. If you don't want full control, but if you need high performance compute for your workload, you would choose Azure Batch. In some scenarios, you would need a microservices architecture. That's where you would choose App Service. And if you're trying to build an application which is based on an event-driven workload with a short-lived process, Azure Functions and Logic Apps can come in play. Again, within a new environment, if you need a full-fledged orchestration, that's where you would choose ACS. And further, if you need .NET integration or fully supported Microsoft technology stack, you would tend to choose either Service Fabric. And if you don't want, then you can go with Azure Kubernetes Service. So let's understand what is a lift and shift scenario means. Lift and shift is a strategy for migrating a workload to the cloud without redesigning the application or making code changes. Also, this is called as rehosting. So what does it mean by a cloud optimized environment? Cloud optimized is a strategy for migrating to cloud by refactoring an application to take advantage of cloud native features and capabilities. The output from this flowchart is a starting point for consideration. Before we move forward, let us explore some of these features we have seen in the previous flowchart. So what is Azure App Service? Azure App Service is a managed service for hosting web applications, mobile app backends, RESTful APIs, or automated business processes. What are Azure Functions? Azure Functions is a cloud service available on demand that provides all the continually updated infrastructure and resources needed to run your applications. So you focus on the pieces of code that matters most to you and the functions handle the rest. So the functions provide serverless compute for Azure. What is Azure Batch? Azure Batch is a managed service for running large scale parallel and high performance computing applications. What are container instances? Container instances are the fastest and simplest way to run a container in Azure. So without having to provision any virtual machines and without having to adopt higher level service. And finally, virtual machine is where you can deploy and manage VMs inside an Azure virtual network. So let us review these hosting models. Cloud services includes Azure services generally fall into three categories. IaaS, AS, or SaaS. IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service lets you provision individual VMs along with associated networking and storage components. SaaS or Platform as a Service provides a managed hosting environment where you can deploy your applications without needing to manage VMs or networking resources. Azure App Service is a PaaS service. There is a spectrum from IaaS to pure PaaS. For example, Azure VMs can auto-scale by using virtual machine scale sets. This automatic scaling capability isn't strictly platform as a service, but it's the type of management feature found in the past services. In general, there is a trade-off between control and ease of management. 
IaaS gives the most control, flexibility, and portability, but you must provision, configure, and manage the VMs and network components you create. Next, we need to understand the Azure service limits, scalability, and availability of all of these services. So please search for Azure subscription service limits and coda and constraints. This is one stop shop to find out what are the limits for your Azure subscription and what are the ways you can overcome that limit. As you can see that some of the services have adjustable limits. Let's suppose you would like to increase the number of cores within your subscription. You can open a support request with Microsoft and they will be able to change the default limit on some of these services. This is where you would be able to go through some general limits. As you can see that the number of management group which supported per Azure AD tenant is 10,000. That's a huge number. But in whatever reason you want to have more than that, that's where you can reach out to Microsoft to see if, mm -hmm. if you would be able to increase that limit. Let's look at some of the subscription limits. As you can see that there is no limit on the number of Azure Active Directory tenants per subscription. And there is no limit for number of core administrators in a subscription as well. But there is a resource group limit. You can only have 980 resource groups within an Azure subscription. And some interesting Azure resource group limits can be found out here as well. So you can have only up to 800 resources per resource group. If you use templates heavily, ARM templates, there are some things to consider before you move forward with your template deployments. What are the limits in terms of parameters and variables and what are the limits for output as well? Azure Active Directory is a key component in Azure and it's very important for us to understand the number of tenants, domains and resources you can have with an Azure Active Directory. If you deal with API or API management, you can find out the limits for APIs as well. Again, you can see the limits on Azure App Services as well. This clearly mentions individual limits on each of these tiers, either free, shared, basic, standard, premium, and isolated. Similarly, you can go through different limits for different Azure services here. As you can see that you can basically go through this entire document to find out different limits for different Azure services. So please do go through these documents before you design an Azure solution for your environment. In the next episode, we're going to look into how can you determine appropriate compute technologies. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.